She loved the 72 year old women. Exactly. Oh, yes, ladies. Don't mm-hmm. be telling my age. Oh, oh, what well, wasn't <laughs> applicable to you? He, but he loves you. You were right on it. That <laughs> <laughs> you, you got lucky. You had the first one and the second one. You know. That's, 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 he said she satisfies me completely. <laughs> talking about that RMD. Y'all know about what an RMD is. Yes, indeed. Well, that's what we do. Take care of everything at Afro Economics. Tonight, we're talking about re- required minimum distributions, <laughs> but most importantly, also, it depends. Look, it depends, but it's also cybersecurity has become like a headline. It's a headliner. So I thought that we, we need to um, a lot of times we're we're ahead of the curve. I hope y'all have realized that that we talk about things before everybody else is talking about things, and which is a blessing. Which is a blessing. We wanna we wanna head it off. Thank you for sharing your Wednesday night with me. I am JB Bryan, the Chief Investment Officer and Creator of J.B. Bryan Financial Group, the home of Afroeconomics, a strategic financial management program designed for the advancement of Black wealth in America and everywhere. Let's get wealthy, y'all. And wealth is not just about rich. Wealth is deeper than rich. So there's 10 principles to Afroeconomics and uh, it's about holistically. It's a whole. It's about a lifestyle. Hey, it's about financial fitness. It includes your generational wealth. It includes your commitment to entrepreneurship, credit confidence, learning about the knowledge of tax strategies and investment options. All of that, and in, that includes cybersecurity. So. Tonight, what the in, in researching and gathering our information for tonight's discussion, and I opened up some of the microphones for the um full some of the a few of the talkative ones that will share with me because I need that feedback, and because you're gonna think that I have some members of Afro Economics that will hopefully generously ask questions, um, provide insight, share their experiences. <laughs> But most importantly, they're my eyes and ears to you, because what they think about, most likely one of you are thinking about as well. So that's why I have that commitment to opening up the microphones to these people. Like some of them are babies and some of them are grown folk, like King Hollis. He's in here with us tonight. He's not with us all the time. But when it comes to securing his money, he don't play. So he said, he said, he said, I'm going to log in tonight. So that, that's a blessing. We're glad that you're with us, King Hollis. Thank you for sharing. Look at him as Charles. You know, we got our folks from Maryland. We got D.C. We have Georgia. Oh, we got Texas. Oh, we have Virginia. I appreciate everybody, no matter where you are. I appreciate you. Got, oh, I'm sorry. We got Pennsylvania, Miss Howard. Queen Howard's like, what? What about us? We got Pennsylvania as well. That's a huge state, <laughs> huge state. So that, let's look at let's look at some. Let's go into um some of my notes really quickly. Um, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is indeed a bigger topic, a headliner, more critical than ever before. No, that, I mean, it has, even earlier this week, I don't know if any of you heard about like um, Amazon and Reddit being down, um, the, um, the internet, um, their cloud service was down that they were using as a contractor. And as I research uh, market, uh, the investment market security, a lot of it is going to have to do with services that are outside of that actual um place like um, for example a big part of my firm cybersecurity is to do a background check Ms. Davis a full background check on the service providers that I use 
like the financial planning software has to have a background check. The secure firm portal where I keep um, client information has to have an updated and consistent background check on what are they doing to secure the information that my clients share with them. So everybody, but that is about a very um, sizable investment that I make into cybersecurity. But um, it's one of those things like life insurance that, you know, that you have to have it. And if you ever have to use it and, you know, I guess life insurance is, is guaranteed we're all going to die. <laughs> so that, that you got to get the most quality with your money because it'll never be a waste of money. Not completely because we're all going to die one day. But the, but the, but also the, but cybersecurity, I'm making that investment is, and if you look at some of the fine print out now, they'll argue that it's not about if it happens, it's more about when it happens. So a big part of business, a big part of life is operating yourself as a business. So we want to think of, oh, cybersecurity is not a concern for me. That's a business issue. But you are your own enterprise. And I always want to always encourage you to, to carry yourself that way. So that's why a key principle of Afroeconomics is entrepreneurship. Doesn't matter if you never start your business, but that entrepreneur mindset of how do I take ownership of my financial goals? How do I take ownership of the legacy of my family? How do I take ownership of protecting on my assets and my personal data. I was watching a, a movie um, and then Michael's like, oh, she's not gonna remember the name. Of course, I never remember the name that we watch, the movies that we watch. But they, um, they, um, the police officer was going into the see, to the bank to secure the bank after a bank robbery. And the manager of the bank, the bank. they have pictures. You miss Simon? They said, I, they had, they had, he says to the police officer, they have pictures of my family. They have pictures of my house. They have pictures of my kids, you know? And the police officer said, you should know better mm -hmm. than to have put your pictures of your family out there on social media. And he was like speechless. Cause he was, the police officer was forcing him to take ownership of of this, you know, of why they had the information in the first place. Interesting when you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. How many things do you share your information with, you know, and you don't know, you know, what you're doing? Like, it's like, even for example, people that have their date of birth in their email address. Ooh. I mean, how many people are you giving your date of birth out to? I, I, I remember in a, um, a recent um, newspaper interview and they wanted to put my date of birth on there, not just month and day. They wanted the full date of birth. And I said, no, you know, they told me they had to check with the editor on if that was okay. <laughs> was what? Like, We're not gonna do the article. If you can't just put March 10th, you're not getting anything else. You know, that's, I said, I get letters from people that are in prison. You know what I mean? I get letters from strangers. I get, you know what I mean? I, I'm, who knows who's watching what about you? You, you know what I mean? Should be very careful. I can see people who like, or go on social media and say exactly what their age is. What are you doing? You're telling them your date of birth. Mm -hmm. It's not about, I don't want nobody to know how old I am because I want to look young. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's not the point. That is important, identifiable information. Like, you know, that if they have that along with, because generally a lot of cyber crimes on a personal level are done by someone that knows you anyway. 
So there were people who were online one time and they were giving out their credit score and they were bragging about, you know, how, how good their credit scores were and showing pictures of the screenshot of their credit score and everything. And, and I said, I don't really feel comfortable with this, you know? And then this, um, one of the people were like, I mean, I'm not trying to snap or anything, but I'm just wondering why, like, you know, and I've learned now, like, let people do what they do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I wouldn't do that today. Tell them I don't feel comfortable with it. But like the, but not then, I don't know. I just felt like taking a chance of saving somebody's financial future. So I said, I don't feel comfortable. And this is why, and I said, because you're giving out information, you're setting yourself up as a target. You know, it's like saying that you have an 800 or a 750 credit score to someone who's going, going to try to, you know, take some, steal somebody's credit to get approved for someone, that just narrows it down. Y'all giving me like 10 people I know with good credit. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why do random when you have specific friends that you know have good credit? <laughs> That's focus right. On, focus on their mailbox. And they know their birthday too. <laughs> and they know and uh, they know where they live. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. so, so we'll sit there and we'll worry about things that we have no reason to worry about, but overlook the obvious thing that you should be responsible for. Stop telling, you know, everything about yourself. Stop, stop telling about what you're going to do. At least don't tell to you after you already did it. Mm -hmm. We're going to be gone for a week, you know. <laughs> Y'all well, especially... won't see us on Smith Street next week, you know. <laughs> or, or post pictures when you're out of town. Yeah, oh, true. You told them that way too, exactly. <laughs> well, we know you ain't home right now. It's going to take you at least five hours to get back because you in Atlanta. Hey, this, mm -hmm. you, right now, you having lunch in Atlanta? Oh, I, oh, oh I'm good. Pittsburgh is on. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Mm. interesting though mm -hmm. so that's the way that these ransomware people act and I don't personally believe that all of these attacks are coming from some foreign country mm -mm. but a lot of the information exactly that you'll receive tries to make you feel like the threat is way out of this world but you people have the ability to make it look like they're anywhere on the planet. Hackers are not dummies. Why in the world would a hacker who's hacking and trying, like this most recent one with the, one of the recent ones with Colonial Pipeline, when they were going for over $4 million and got it, mm. why would they let you know where they're coming from? <laughs> what they're connected to? So that's why right. these other countries are like, why are you tripping? You're, you're joking, right? How would, you know, why would, <laughs> when you could easily cover it up, why would he let you know exactly where we are? So, but interesting enough that um, ha it's according to reports, about half of the um, cryptocurrency that was demanded, what has been confiscated, taken back. But a lot of this has been the ransom where they take over the company computer or even personal. There's people's personal computers that have been taken over by ransom attacks. If you all see Ms. Sumter come in at any point, let me know because she is our resident um, cybersecurity um, expert. She had like a couple of... Um, presentations today I was talking to her earlier I was like um you know if you check in tonight I hope you have your hair ready because it's gonna be on <laughs> we're gonna put her we're gonna put her on there aren't we at the um the oh so let's let's go back I don't I don't see her as of yet how you doing Miss Richardson how you oh look at y'all look at that DC checking in it's the Joan how How's it going? How are you, Mr. Wen? That's so good. So good. Good to see you. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel like I see y'all, but you know, good to see your name. <laughs> good to see your <laughs> right, Mr. Jones. Good to see That's your right. name. Right. So, so 
with this, um, some key key points as well. So think about this. Do you realize that financial institutions, as I do, that's why I feel I spend so much on on protecting myself and uh, also on making additional investments on, I want staff and I'm starting training on Sunday where I want staff to just focus on um, cybersecurity and compliance in the issues that I want them to, as we grow, because as, as we grow, it's about becoming more and more efficient as we grow. We have quite a few members of Afroeconomics. And with that comes, I need to have more paperwork on you. I need to have more data protected. I need to have, you know, the DocuSign that I use is, you know, um, is a major component of a lot of the, of, of, of the portfolios that I put together for you. But they're having an actual bad year. And you would think, you know, but they had a good year last year, but this year, you know, um, but but there's a lot of cybersecurity companies that I like to see in the components of the portfolios as I put them together. So a lot of times I won't do the individual stock because, um, for, for example, that individual stock might have a 13% drop individually, but I can have it as part of a blend. Um, and then it, instead, I might see a one or two percent drop instead of the thirteen in a direct individual investment. So, you know, diversification is, can be a defensive move, but also diversification can stop you from getting the hundred percent of that run up when it's doing great. So everything is a give and take, right? So financial institution, as far as social security, I mean, as far as cybersecurity. We have to be on it. There was a big attack for Equifax. There was a big attack on JP Morgan Chase. There was a, a there was a attack on the um, United States Securities Exchange Commission. Wow. There's a, the, um, the threat is being taken so seriously on the push for, they want to get your information so bad that there's, um, that there's a department called the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. That, and then they call it the, you know, they always have acronyms, D-A-R-P-A, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency that oversees the development of advanced technologies for use by the military. But it has now been met with the responsibility of checking out the vulnerabilities in the financial systems of our country. You know, when they start coming after like the Securities Exchange Commission, I mean, it really becomes an issue. And you're talking about, you know, hackers going into the Associated Press. True, they hacked the Associated Press and started um, and sent out a message that the White House, did y'all know this? No, that the White House had been bombed or caught on fire, and that um, President Obama was injured, and it actually, you know, the um, stock market responded to it uh -oh. before wow. the news could be corrected. Mm. So the um, there's, you know, amazing the amount of <laughs> craziness that happens before, you know, and sometimes never even shared to the general public. Mm. things that we don't even know about mm. but, but it's, it's 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 about let me let's like so we now know that the government is getting very involved in how um setting up regulations on how businesses need to make sure that they're protected and i don't right. know i was going to ask you jb about that because a lot of our infrastructure here in america and our financial institutions and things have not invested the money in their systems to make sure that they're secure. And I think this is really revealing that everybody and everything is vulnerable. It's not just our little personal information and things like that. It's way exactly. bigger than us. Cause like, like the, cause the, the challenge is like our industry, even me as a registered investment advisory firm. And I think that's why 
um, investors should really think about who they do their financial business with because our community is much more likely to do business with someone that's not licensed, not regulated, you know, and, and, but, but what happens is I actually have a rule book of how things have to be done on what ha my, my cybersecurity system has to exist. That's why I have to pay this, you know, money. And they're looking for it and look for the response and have criteria that follows their, the federal investors, um, national registry, so FINRA, whatever it stands for, FINRA that regulates the financial industry, that it actually has cybersecurity guidelines that we have to follow. Mm that require those people that I store information with, you know? So, so like if you, um, you know, are working with someone and they're, they're just, you know, storing your information, you know, with some company um, or they just, you know, say that, or they go, I, I don't use, you know, I don't use the cloud. I just, you know, I just write everything down or whatever, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, you're taking that chance because you have not connected yourself with the regulations and the protection that our government provides. When a person chooses to not, you know, partner with a licensed person, that's the choice that they made. Mm, so we have to, you know, um, you know, realize that like take take it completely seriously um, how you protect your personal information. Thank so, you. Uh, yes. Um, like when you talk about the birthday, getting out your birthday information, in order to open an account with Facebook, they, you have to give them your birthday. Because I tried, I tried to sidestep that. They wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. You can make up a birthday, but the hard <laughs> part is remembering the birth date that you make up. You make up. That's right. like, but the birth date really is not powerful information unless they have something else with it. Go with you see it. what I'm saying? It just yeah. because so that's why I was saying like me knowing your birthday means more, you know, than you know, I don't know, because Facebook can use your birthday and then they have all these advertisers that, you know what I mean, will start exactly. coming after you. Because exactly. you're like, but exactly. but from a disclosing your information point of view, no. But like, it's all part of financial services, birthdays. So, you know, once we set up an investment account, social security, you know what I mean? A whole bunch of um, personal information. That's why hackers go after financial service providers so bad. That's why mm. they went after Equifax. And it's all about how the company responds. Mm. All, all about how the company responds. And it's not nice. Like, I think you, Mr. Jones, was telling me about a letter you got that they had, somebody told you they were hacked and they gave you the letter 90 days later. 90 days later, yeah. That's, that's wow. ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Like, that mm. is like probably the number one business error you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. As far, right. As, as far as keeping consumer confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. If, if something like that happened with us, you know, God forbid, you know, I, that's why I have the texting system, the email system, you know what I mean? All of these alternative ways of communicating with my client. Can you imagine if somebody took over the, the social security office? Can you imagine? Mm, don't give me no ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like the like yeah, and like they couldn't send out people's social security check, you know, yeah. even if there was like a week delay or even a day delay, there's a whole bunch of people that didn't get their check that day. Right. That's well, the kind even, of opportunity. Again, what would they would they alert them after 90 days or would they wait enough oh, another exactly. 90 days? <laughs> they wouldn't have to no, they wouldn't have to alert them because when they didn't get their direct deposit, they'll, they'll, they'll alert them. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, I don't know, something's out. <laughs> Y'all better figure something out, get a cash advance, something. <laughs> but, but you know, you put your social security on, like even if you go to the doctor's office. So it's it really 
we should think about that. Um, exactly. Why do you really need that? You know. Now they're trying to move towards the last four digits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, like even in even in my computer system, that if if I have that in there, and if for some reason I wanted someone else to give, if I gave someone else in my downline access to that information, I can designate it that they only see last four digits. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of these financial institutions they'll say, "Well, I can only see this." You know what I mean? They can't see it mm. anyway. So, so they're not on that level. What'd you say? May I say something? Uh -huh. Well, back in the early 2000s, they knew, they knew about this. They should have had a better protection to the whole United States system. They knew about this. There was, mm. a, tax, there was a tax every day in the early 2000s, mm. even, even in the military. Wow. Yeah, that's right. They knew about this. They played it. They, they I played totally it. agree with you. They played around and they drew knew. their feet on it. I exactly. They didn't want to put the money or investment in taking care and securing their system. And then, because you remember not. when the new the new millennium, and they said that um everything was going to be fine. Everything was going to shut down. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and everybody else thought it was going to shut down. So right, that's probably right. why um King Hollis is saying so much was kept from us yes. because. They were like, people are already terrified. <laughs> even, so, a company, even a company that did did uh, security investigations as far as uh, you are uh, 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 everything, they was even hacked. They was the government was hacked. So, like I said, back in the early 2000s, they knew about this. There should have been something put in place then. And yeah, another right. thing. And another thing, we're constantly buying, we're constantly buying foreign parts. Yeah. These parts are already jammed up for us, That's for right. us to be, for us to be taken under control. That's supply chain, right? Yes, and we, exactly. Yep, yep. And then so now, like they're saying about used cars, but you, you know, are in such high demand because they're not making the new ones because we can't get to the chips. Isn't that something? Mm. When we have all of these people in our country that need to have that type of training, we should be making our own chips. Mm. Wow. But but we're not. So, you know, now I'm like, what are we, as was you know, King Hollis just said, what are what can we learn? What are we gonna learn from this? Are we gonna do? Yeah, your car is a computer on wheels. It sure is. It's mm. amazing. Yeah. And the um the not not mine because mine is like a 2011 Jeep Wrangler, but I know what you mean. <laughs> mine either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen it on other people though. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mine is mine is an actual car. It's this actual <laughs> stick shift too. Wow. You, you can push it hard and it'll start. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's like two steps from my motorcycle, but my motorcycle goes faster. It gets yeah. you from point A to point B most of the time, though, right? In style. In okay. style. And it's a convertible. You know what I'm All saying? All right. And you can't look, and you couldn't drag me away from my my, my Wrangler. Mm, my, my, my point is this you got more than your money for us out of that joint. You know I did. I could, <laughs> I could probably sell it today for more than I bought it for. You know, almost. Wow. That's wow. how much people love Wranglers. I'm like, the Wrangler yes. world, girl, we wave at each other when we drive by and everything. It's What's like- What's the mileage on it, JB? 130, it's not that much. For wow. Yeah. Last year, I think I drove it like 400 miles. No, it wasn't even 400, it's probably 100. <laughs> and that's, how, that's how much I work. And thanks to um, Michael, right? Because every time I went somewhere, he took me. So <laughs> really, it, was, it probably would have had more, but he drives everywhere. And he can't drive a stick yet. I got to get him driving my stick so I can be styling in my Jeep. Yeah, but <laughs> he's, he's an automatic. Who drives a, who can drive a stick? Anybody else? Me. JB, I can... JB I'm a... I was a professional Maybe. driver. I cannot drive a stick, though. 
<laughs> oh. I, 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 I've, I've flooded two engines on sticks. I, I, I can't do it. Yeah, but you did that automatic bus. I know y'all be spinning. <laughs> y'all got to look good smiling at the ladies and stuff. Look at that. You, can't, like, drive, you can't drive then if you can't drive a stick. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Mr. Hollis, I'm a, Mr. Hollis. Uh -oh. I'm a city driver. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm a city driver. <laughs> only, thing, only thing you're doing, you're just holding it in the road. <laughs> exactly. 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 Look, I, See, so, I'm, so, I'm so different that literally, Mr. Cobbett, I learned, I learned how to drive leaving the car dealership on my stick shift drive because I had 30 miles to go home from the wow. dealership. I mean, wow. I probably I probably ruined the transportation and that was on another stick. Then wow. I, you know, that was just my first car stick, but I tore that transportation up, the transmission up. It was just, Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, JB, we gotta, get, look, we gotta get Mr. Jones on a hill. Mr. Jones, you get on that hill, you <laughs> You are right about that. <laughs> so, 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 the, in you, bus. so, so, what I'm hearing is you're going to force me to learn. She's bad. <laughs> don't, you, don't you spend the water to swim. Hey, she bad. <laughs> hey, she bad. You know who that is, Mr. Jones. That's big, big white afro. <laughs> <laughs> She gonna never. She never gonna let you live that down. You and Michael, we are gonna take both of y'all, put them on a the hill, right? Make them. That's right. Drive it. Drive now. Yeah, that is so mean. That is so mean. I'm telling you, I can't do it. But there's a lot. There's a lot of professional drivers who, and then some can't drive like a regular sick, but they drove a truck, like 18 wheelers, have like, like. I don't know, like 12 gears or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they don't know how to drive a regular stick shift on a regular car either. Mm. Yeah, because this my is uncle me. tried to my uncle actually tried to he gave me a a, a Yugo. I never forgot this. He gave me a Yugo. <laughs> and then I had to take him to work. We left in the Bronx, we went to New Jersey. And I had to bring the car back from New Jersey to New York. I got back to the highway <laughs> and the engine flooded. Oh, I had to Lord. push it off to the, the like uh, uh, it was an abandoned Burger King. Low. I had to call my buddy Collect to come get me. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> and that was the last of the Yugo. <laughs> me and boy, my uncle said, "What you do with the car?" I said, "I left it at the Burger King." Oh go. my goodness! <laughs> That's terrible. That's like my brother did with a car one time. He left it at a um gas station. Y'all are too much. <laughs> Something's wrong with like, it. Like when you get when when my cousin give me something, it's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's terrible. <laughs> the what is the oh let me tell so let me tell y'all these some um some tips for you personally for our cybersecurity as we drive our stick shift. <laughs> Yo, right. you keep, keep that keep keep your um keep everything up to date, not just the car, right? But keep keep everything on um, up up to date. Like every time they say, "Oh, this this um your your um your security software is expired," update it. You know the um don't do like I do sometimes and just continuously ignore it. Oh, I'll do that later. I gotta do that later. I'll call the Geek Squad. I'll get that later. You know, keep keep it updated, especially if you're a high risk person like I. I am monitored because as Ms. Sumter, our security specialist was saying that the biggest like flaw on um, the biggest inlet, like how people get into you is through what's called phishing, how they get it. And, and that's by clicking on like every email you get. So it's mm. about 90% of the emails I get, I never look into. Cause it's all junk, you're right. If mm -hmm. I can't, I end. And I get like a violation if I click into something because because they're I'm being monitored by the people I pay. Okay. So I'm supposed to be smarter. So let's so like if, if there's sometimes people will go, um, um, you know, did you get my email? If it's not identifiable, like someone yesterday, the other day sent me an email and it just had two letters to it and then I was like I don't know who's that it you know what I mean what that is or who that whose name that is so be specific about putting your name into 
your settings of how your name will appear. If your name I is got, not in I your got email. one of those this week, JB. And, and it's, yeah, because you're Gmail, not going to look at it. We should, I, I didn't yeah. open it. I, I just oh. scrolled on it. And the email said, this email address is unidentifiable. That's right. Good. Good. And keep moving. Because right. I, then I have to, the way that I'm, I'm paying them. So if I go into that phishing, saw, that phishing email, and Lord knows if I click, I have to do training. Then I have to go through that whole training thing again. Okay, you violated this, you know, this, da, 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 da. but that is because the Securities Exchange Commission and the regulators and FINRA and the state want to know that I am protecting your information. So, JB, it's like that at both of my jobs. And like you say, when you get an email you, and it says, oh, you have, uh, you just won a thousand dollars or you got 25 hours of vacation. That's You're right. supposed to go straight to fishing with that because uh, they'll make me take a class. Exactly. I have three opportunities. Right. <laughs> so it's like that on both jobs. And if I if I fail those attempts, I got to go back and take that class again. Wow. <laughs> wow. And at least you get three, you know? Right. That's good. Three, but they really should get you like they get me with one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but the person that gets three, like, you know what I mean? They should not be mad, huh? Mm, they so. may be sending it to you. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. The, mm -hmm. um, that three, you know, all you need is one and, mm. and at, the, at the company, all you need is one of your employees to go into some, if they're on your network mm -hmm. and it could be all <laughs> over. Yep. A lot of, with the company I used to work for, we had a list that you would not go into. Good. Because everything is being monitored. We yeah. had we had an idiot. I call him an idiot. Went into a <laughs> went into a uh, porn site. Oh, no. oh Lord. a porn site and mm. uh, on the job and a hate site on the job. Well, and they, a hate site. They used to say they walked him out that same day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same day. Now, he thought he was at home, didn't he? Yeah. Well, he, he did go home. Oh, well. <laughs> he went home he went I don't know what was paycheck. a lower. And, and mind it. you, King is talking about a government job. I don't oh, know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This, was, this, was, this was with the CEO, uh, field intelligence. Central Field Intelligence Office. Lower. Hey, uh, hey, you, mm. Don't go on these sites. We had a female, right. young female. She's, she, she was stupid. Mm. Well, I, had, I, I had, mean, that's an oxymoron. Female and stupid, they don't even go together. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about either. I don't know. But, hey, we don't listen anyway. We don't listen anyway. Okay. okay. She said, this is what she said. I had to talk to my boo. <laughs> Man, she no had way. plenty of time to talk to her boo. Wow. <laughs> this, this is exactly what he said to her. The supervisor said to her, well, okay, since you had to talk to your boo, either you be fired or you resign. If you resign, you can keep your, your classification. Otherwise, we fire you, you lose everything. everything. At least they gave stupid. her an option. Wow. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is how stupid some people are, and they tell them, please don't go on these sites. And, and, like said, and like I said, okay. that should have oh, even so your, she even went on a death. site to talk to her boo. Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And people, and a lot of people are even working from home now. Just, let me throw a this in. People. Even on your telephone, your telephone, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Your checking account, you have to be very careful. That's right. Because, because I, I, I'm a victim. Mm. I know. Mm -hmm. So true. And, yeah. I, and people better be careful if they're working from home on these like government computers and stuff on those networks and things. You can't be going to all kinds of sites on that computer because right. they track that. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. I would assume that they're looking at everything, even they, you. Oh, yeah. Like right. I would assume. Oh, yeah. I would. I would assume, and I know that they even have a camera. You know what I'm saying? Like just work on. Well, that. no, no, not the state. Mine ain't got no cameras. I hope <laughs> they, not. They cheat. But that's why, JB, when I talk to you, I'm on my personal laptop when I do that. And when I sometimes when I tell you, I say, oh, let me get my work computer so I can put it on the calendar uh, so I can check my calendar. But I don't talk to you from that, not from that. I wouldn't even, work computer. but I wouldn't even mm -hmm. trust 
that they don't have a camera. I just think sometimes they can say they don't have a camera for you to use. You know what I'm saying? But That's they can true. still have a camera looking at people. Absolutely, but I agree. I, I mean, that's that's how um, you know uh, how 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 I would just be. You know what I'm saying? I would, just, I would close it. I would close it if I had something I didn't want them to see. You know, because you JV. never know. JV, um, this is Monica, um, the teacher in Prince George's County. Um, we as county teachers have access to a site a website that allows us to view what the students are viewing mm. during the school day. Mm. Oh. So we can we can see what what, what websites they're on. Oh wow. yeah. So if they have that, I'm sure they probably you know have it mm. on us to see what yeah. websites we're on during the oh school day. Oh my god. Wouldn't oh, that yeah. be something? Wouldn't Makes that sense. be something? I think they was telling y'all that when they let y'all do that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Uh. You can uh, yeah, we can work under that assumption, mm -hmm. you know, Yes. that if they can do that, then somebody on the next level, like I was saying about, yeah. we have ways to set up the security <laughs> that you can see this, but only I can see this. You know, mm -hmm. I have that all the time on different things. Brother's always watching. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So the, um, yeah. uh, also, let's go back to like things for us to keep in mind. So keep everything updated, consider having the um, firewall protection. You know, sometimes it gets very irritating when you personally have firewall protection because there's things that you want to do and you cannot access it. And you think that it's, you know, um, like, oh, I can't see my account. And sometimes it's because your firewall is not letting you in. Right, you so block yourself get out. A, yeah, get an understanding note, make sure you know how to use it. You know, but it can help you um, from attacks like that. Um, that remember, I would know some of you've heard Ms. Muhammad talk about a time where they came, a ran ransom came yeah. in and took over one of her computers, and it was crazy. And she called me, and it was making noises and I'm making mm. an alarm and everything. And I told her, "Don't do anything. Bring it to me." She opened it up in my office, and it was still making that noise, and. Um, somehow we backed it out. I can't even remember how we did it, but we had it, it was a process. Wow. So um, don't depend on me. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but be very careful if that ever happens to you. Look, look, call me, and then we'll call somewhere else. Right. <laughs> but the um, but you use strong passwords. Don't use you know um things that are easily to um, assume for you. You know, be very careful with that. Or, or even there's like um, password management stuff out there now that'll help you pick crazy, huge passwords. So. And, then, and then it'll save it for you so you won't have to remember. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then, but then we have to be careful, right? So I do a lot of things, especially with my phone, with fingerprint only. So it can't be accessed unless they have my fingerprint. And the um, the only want to think about is people start taking people's fingers, and the, the, <laughs> the, Lord, the, Lord. The, right? <laughs> and then also, I know that it's irritating, but it is very important. And I remember years ago when I started talking about this, but that second level, our um, authentication, very important. Everybody is everywhere I go is demanding that of me now. If I go into so and so, you got to have it. I put it on our secure firm portal. When you look, you know, you got to have it. Like the, um, do it, do it, do it. And then um, I said, we already talked about like being careful of phone calls that um, are phishing and scams and um, suspicious emails that you might get. Just be. Um, careful of um, phishing, and you can continue to do research on that. Is P H I S H I N G? Phishing is the term, and that is when scammers are just out there fishing around trying to find somebody that's going to fall for it. And I've had a couple of of people that just take over clients' emails, and they'll send things like. I'm out of the country, I need money and things like that. And it's kind of spooky to me because I'm like, 
are they sending that specifically to me? You know what I mean? Or did they send that to all your friends? <laughs> And mm-hmm. typically, they send it to all their all friends. Your friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, it's not about you, JB. They send it to everybody. <laughs> I'm like, how they know that you had money with me? No. So the um, but yeah, they just do these things, and it's it's crazy. So don't open email from people that you don't know. You know, be suspicious of emails that are sent. Uh, um, to you in general. Look for where they came from. Um, look for if it has like spelling errors or um, grammatical errors. I mean, that's the one that really gives it away. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, you, you know, you'll go, oh no, that's someone that's English as a second language. You know, they'll have something in the email you can tell. Mm-hmm. VIP security app, um, Mr. Wynn says is good. We have to check that out. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if Miss Sumter will come on as a, a panelist. She's been like, she's been trying to like give me a funny face. I see it. She came in. How are you doing? Holloway? How you doing? We should we're gonna get her, y'all. Ask her anything. I, I how y'all I, doing tonight? I, I I told them, Miss Sumter, that you are the cybersecurity. How you doing, Miss Galloway? <laughs> Wonderful and you. Oh, really good. Get ready, Miss Galloway, because we got Miss Sumter on. And she's <laughs> gonna, oh, she's at she's oh she's a Bahamas. A I wish. <laughs> I like that's a that's a that's a bomb background though. I love no, that. Don't let them know where you at. <laughs> that's a bomb background. Are you out of look exactly? Are you out of town? Oh no, don't <laughs> tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you look pretty for a cybersecurity. You don't look like a geek. <laughs> look at you. That's a common misconception. It's not some weirdo in a basement with a hoodie. <laughs> I know. I know. You be like, you could be a hacker and get away with it. You know, they'd be like, not her. She's too cute. Let's, let's pick the ugly one. He's the hacker. Isn't that true? That's so sad. Mm mm mm. So we were talking. I, I don't know how much you heard me in my um my 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 cyber tips because I kind of was going you know back and forth and I wanted to like really finish with personal stuff. We started talking about this financial service industry overall. Like I feel that we are um, the most vulnerable because we have so much information you know that they want you know or one of the many industries probably. Um, medical, you would think, or be up there Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, A number of hospital and medical organizations have been hit with ransomware. Mm. And commonly they pay because you, you know, you can't treat patients, you can't do surgeries, you can't dispense medication if the records are tied up. Uh, Um, But those, you don't hear about them in the news as much anymore, but they're still occurring. Mm. Oh, that's so sweet. Mr. Wynn called you a goddess. He said, we have goddesses everywhere. That's right. I was just joking. Don't hold it against me. I know if I was actually famous, it would matter what I said. Because they'd be like, she said, J.B. Broad said, people in IT, they, they say, oh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty. I'm pretty, I'm in IT. I, I was just joking. I'm joking. Look, look, exactly. <laughs> Look, I, next time I'm just gonna give you your compliment and not get put down anybody else. That's what I should have done, you know. Exactly. I don't know, but uh, here I am thinking I'm chosen. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. We have a beautiful goddesses in IT. We are here to encourage girls in STEM. You have a woman in technology and a woman in you know, technology, you have a woman in finances and a woman in technology, both of us in technical fields, really, you know, boy, it's all of my day and business is done in front of a computer. So we have more and more women and I hope that we're given an example to not just good looking women, but less good looking women too. Look, there's a place in technology for everybody. You will be amazed at how me and her look Without our makeup on, I'm just joking. You don't have a speck of makeup on. She is a high tech, clean, and 
beautiful, smart queen of IT. And all the other women in IT are too. Now, did I clean it up a little bit? I don't know. You were trying. <laughs> exactly. I would say a smidgen, a smidgen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can be ugly and be an IT too. I just want to give everybody equal rights. You know what I'm saying? Like, Leave it alone, JB. Leave it alone. Thank you. Thank you. Please save me, somebody. Leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Wynn started it. The um, so then also, so we were talking about the um fishing that you had mentioned when I was speaking with you earlier about um, you know, fishing being like the biggest way for them to get into your system. You can maybe share a little bit on that. Right, because it's a low risk, high reward um, type of social engineering attack where mm. they pretty much encourage you to participate in your own compromise. Mm. And they just blast these messages out and you know, it only takes one or if they're trying to extort for money, you figure if they get you for a couple mm. of Bitcoin or fraction of a Bitcoin these days, then they made quite a nice chunk of change for a day's work. Uh, mm, but that's all they really want is a way into your environment. And once they get in, whether it's to get into, um, get steal your login information or install some sort of malware so they can take over your computer, mm. then that's really all they want. And, and then, then from there, they can get whatever else they want. What was this? Like one of this... Um these security um, consulting firms like put out this graphic that 31% of the hacks come from um, phishing, you know, that people responding and then 24%, which is very close to 31, just from individual mistake. But I guess responding to a phishing <laughs> is an individual mistake, right? But well, then all, I right? <laughs> the, uh, I don't know how they broke that down into a different category. And then 17%, it's that external theft. And well, and, and people are not knocking on the door anymore because um, companies have, or individuals have mm. firewalls. And it's like, that's a known bad attack and it'll drop that connection. But phishing is like social engineering. And so we say it's easier to hack the user than the computer. So basically it's easier for you to let me in the door than me trying to beat on it and kick the door in. Mm. Um, and it just takes a moment and the best intentioned people fall for these phishing emails. They've really gotten pretty good and more sophisticated over the oh. years. This past year with COVID, we, you know, there's been a exponential increase in the number of phishing mm. ransomware mm. and all kinds of different cyber attacks because you figure the cyber criminals at home too. Mm. So yeah, nothing. Like, and remember that um, scenario I, I was sharing with you about um, I, in, in one of the um, financial um, articles it had about people closing on their house with Bank America for, and they sent a half a million dollars to an email instructions right. that they received. They followed the email instructions and it went, their money did not go to Bank of America. And mm. you, you were saying, that the email probably said Bank America, like you said, like, or like anything, like anything small, like to look at that air. So Absolutely, that was one they, the because it takes, I can spin up a Gmail account in a few minutes and I can call it JB Bryan. And unless you really pay close attention and look at that email address and you just look at the display name and don't actually look at the email mm -hmm. address, Mm -hmm. then you can respond to it. And that's mm -hmm. what often happens in these situations. Sometimes they can get access to a mailbox and actually send from a legitimate person. Mm -hmm. um, but with something like, a, you know, in that situation with a wire transfer, what the common business practices and you know, places I've worked is if you, you don't respond or what are any money to an email, Mm. You still pick up the phone and call that organization, the intended party, and mm. verify, did you send mm. this? Is this correct information? Mm. Mm. And I mean, a phone call can save, would have saved them so much heartache, heartache and yeah, headache. It, it took them two weeks to get that straight. 
And they they're fortunate they say, got straight. Yo, they didn't exactly because they could have really got none of that money back or had to go through a extended legal process to get their life savings back. Right. They were buying well, in the house cash. The so one just the down payment. You know what I'm saying? They were sending right. the entire cash for that. That is crazy. And that, because you know, oftentimes in those situations, that money is sent to some overseas account and then yeah. once it's gone. It's gone. That's right. Oh my goodness. And that's what happened. It was somewhere, it went somewhere overseas and it came back and they, you know, but that took them two weeks to, to find that money. And yeah, I don't we're think one the of bank, the lucky ones. And they said the bank, right. I don't think the bank ever got it back, but they probably, you know, it was covered under their insurance, you know, um, no, but that, I, I don't know, but that, mm. Or they probably spent two weeks with the lawyer, like, will these people eventually get their money? You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> will they eventually win? Just go ahead and give the people, let them out their mis misery. But that is, you're right. We should, before we send anything like that in response to an email, make sure you confirm that with your connection, with your closing company. And then um, we have a question from Ms. Um, Scranage about the, the VPNs. So VPNs are, they're good to have. It you know, depends on what activities you're doing. Um, do you want to have it on all the time or some of the time? I would say it's, it's a good thing to have. That's what companies use. Like if you work for the government or any organization, they typically will have you connect over their VPN, especially if you're going getting into sensitive systems. Um, as a individual, it's nice to have if you don't want anyone browsing and snooping on your general web traffic. However, I will say this, if you're going to websites most of the time, if you're logging in there, as long as you make sure that website is running HTTP and their certificates are up to date, that connection between you and that website is protected. So it's not like someone can see inside that transmission. Um, but VPNs, now I will say this, because you're still running over your ISP. Your ISP can still see what your traffic is. Mm. So it's not protecting you from, because they own the connection. So it's not like no one can see it. You're just stopping the average Joe from, or Joanne, from seeing um, what what you're browsing and where you're going. Um, so it does help cut down on some of, you know, all of the data mining these organizations mm -hmm. are doing where they target you with ads and things like that. Miss mm -hmm. Sumter, I have a question too. I got a question. Um, how, what's the difference between the VPN and when you log in, when I bought my new laptop, I didn't even know it was on my old one, but they have something called a private window. How safe is that as opposed to the VPN? So you're talking about a private window in your uh, web browser? Yeah. The VPN is more secure. Those private or incognito, depending on which browser you're doing, that's basically not, it's more about privacy and not having the cookies and things like that, seeing where you're going, but it's not offering you the same level of privacy that a VPN would offer. Gotcha. Um, okay. So that's what the privacy window does. It just helps them to stop tracking you. So, but it doesn't stop anyone from seeing what you're doing. You, so I, I need to give me a VPN. Thank so like you. if he's going in, <laughs> but if you're going in like Starbucks and you have like a VPN app, that's where it can really benefit you if you want to use like a public Wi-Fi. Oh, definitely. Now, if you're on a public, I say public Wi-Fi is like a toothbrush. You wouldn't Ooh. use anyone else's. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. So, because if you look at a private, everybody in that Starbucks is using that Wi-Fi. So, anybody who wants to sit there, like I could come in there with my laptop looking like I'm just whatever. And I can read running software that's snipping all the traffic going back and forth. And I can see exactly what you're doing and, you know, and have at it. If you I will. think that's interesting. That work. Wow. So that's why, like, and uh, I don't know, but when I go out to stuff like that, I use my phone as my Wi-Fi. Like, right. you know, mm -hmm. it's no public. Is you like mm -hmm. that? Yeah, good. Okay. But it's, um, thank you.
your, Miss, um, your information is priceless. But I got a question for you as it relates to the addresses, HTTP colon slash slash. What's the difference with the S and without the S? One's secure and one is not. So, okay, so, so the HTTP is just the regular web protocol, how web pages work. And that's uh -huh. like, if you're just looking at regular content, and not doing any sort of transaction, then that's just open for anybody to see and it's not protected. The HTTPS secures that connection. So anytime you're going to shopping and you're gonna check out or checking your banking information or anywhere you're logging in or putting in personal information, you want mm -hmm. to make HTTPS and that their that little padlock is green or it looks normal, like it's not giving you any kind of error. And you know, okay. like what, it was scary to me because I remember my, the um, website service providers when it first came out and they were like, uh, you know, we have secure sites and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't know. I don't need it. And I'm telling you within hours, when I would go to my website, it would go, you're going to an insecure site. Like I was, <laughs> I, so mad. I was so mad. I was like, I know they turned that on. Like you know, I know <laughs> All of a sudden, this come on, and then so I had to upgrade everything. But it's really more relevant when you're actually doing money, like on my membership site, right? It automatically was uh, HTTPS, but the um, the you know, it's just information, you know what I mean? But now everybody's browser, especially if they have these firewalls, they're they're going to get that warning. So I probably would get no one to come to the site. You know, oh, yeah, I would back out. I'm like, mm -mm, no, thank you. <laughs> you like JB? I'd be like, no, I am not going to spend that one hundred dollars for a cashless website that is not collecting money. You know, like, you, well, you just go on and stand by your hundred dollars. You know, because it's not that expensive to have a secure site. So if the site won't pay the few hundred or whatever it is, like to do it, you need to reconsider doing business with them, right? Because that's you know, only a way to protect you as a, com a customer. Right. So. And some sites will, a lot of websites will now automatically redirect you. Even if you put in the HTTP, it will redirect That's right. an HTTPS. Amen. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that. That's what mine does. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who puts in. You, Ms. Davis, you're the only one putting in the whole HTTP stuff. Well, no, I'm not, not all the time. <laughs> yeah, I see her going, she be like, S colon slash back to that. <laughs> I still can't get the back, the slash this way or the slash this way. You know what I'm saying? If they can't be cut and paste, it's just going to get the name. And Google has to take over the rest of the way. Thank God for Google. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah, but that that's why the browsers really do help when you set up your settings, right, for security, they'll help you make sure you're going to the secure site. Because if I hadn't had that in my settings, I wouldn't have caught on that other people were seeing it as an unsecure site. Right. Yeah. But may I ask, <laughs> Ms. Sumter, may I ask you, may I, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, hi, good evening. This is Lydia. Um, what can uh, somebody do with your email and your phone number together? Because I've been on Craigslist, yes, because I look at, you know, there's some valid stuff on Craigslist, right? But then I know immediately that it's, it's a, um, you know, not to follow up if they say, please, because I was looking for some rental stuff, please um, send your phone number right away. And then I just don't do it. So what can they do with email and phone number, the combination? Is that some, yeah. So those two pieces of information alone really doesn't do anything. Well, I mean, if it's your email address, they could start using that to run password attacks against you because typically your login will be your email address and your password on a lot of websites. It defaults to your email. Um, but generally, the, those are like public information, if you will. So no, they really can't do anything with it individually. However, a lot of cyber criminals will piece together information from different sources. So while a little bit over here is not sensitive and a little bit over here is not sensitive, but when you start pulling all of that together, then it builds a profile of you. So, you know, if they can get a, a birth date, which they mm. can get a 
for Facebook. Now you can find an address and then you can find, oh, well, what's your mother's maiden name? And they can mm. pull all of these pieces together mm. to build a profile of you. Mm. Look at that. Miss Simon was saying, what do you think about Amazon automatically connecting your network with your neighborhood, connecting your network with your neighbors? Does that mean like your internet network? That's what they've been talking about all week. I know there's something going on, but that's the whole sidewalk, right? Something yes. Sidewalk. The um, Amazon is the best in the whole world. They can do whatever they want. They're kind of like. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am on the side of um, how should I put this your data um, has value yes and companies are profiting off of your data and what you collect you know you want a gmail account it's free however you know google is a multi-billion dollar industry company so they're making money off of somewhere and it's not giving a, you know it's not just the free email accounts i it's a balance you have to strike what what's more important to you the convenience and the access this service provides or your personal information because you have to pay to play so you're giving up something even if it's your personal information or access to your network in order to participate in it so it's what's the trade off to you because in america our personal data is not treated the way it is like over in the European Union where data is a right as a citizen. So they have more control over, over their personal information than we do. They're trying to do better here in the States, but it's a state by state level. There's no federal mandate for data privacy you know, across the board other than the Privacy Act of 74. And well, that was in 74. Um, so, you know, that would be my take on that. I don't participate in a lot of these three things for that very reason, because you they already collect and mine enough of my data without compensating me for it. And I just rather, you know, I'm trying to shrink my digital footprint. Um, I'm not off the grid, obviously, but, you know, I just, everything, I, I always say I can't afford free. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that Amazon's going to offer for free to referring to like uh, some sort of. Oh, they're going to do it automatically unless you opt out of it. You have to what are they gonna opt do? out. They're going if you have like uh, Amazon Echo or any of those um, devices that people use for their convenience to you know say play your ring music for me. Yeah, your ring, your yeah, your ring bell for your door security or your Echo. They will automatically connect it to your neighborhood to everybody in your neighborhood who has it as well. Unless you opt out of it, well, and that starts, why, I think, this week. Wonder why they're doing that. Like, you know, there must be something, some good thing they think that's good with it. You know, they lose the ring doorbell. And why do you have to opt out oh, wow. for something that you know you never agreed to participate in? <laughs> right. They, How they, many people will yeah. actually opt out? Exactly. So the the thing I should did. be yes. you can opt in if you want it, uh, but no. if you never agree to. Yeah, that, that's when not right. Body, you must opt <laughs> it in. But I don't have any of those things. But I, I got a question for Miss Sumter. I've, I've never felt comfortable. I'm sure, Mr. Joe, I've never felt comfortable with the ring, you know, I mean, because it's like um, has these neighborhood groups already. You right. know, mm -hmm. I mean, my neighborhood like is become like hypersensitive and ladies at the gym tell me about like they spoke they go look at that person walking down the street I wonder where they, you know I don't want to see my neighbors that way you know what I'm saying it's hypersensitive so I just like didn't join plus I don't want you to see the front of my door like you know they all can see the front you know what I mean of each other's door like and maybe that's what Amazon is trying to do like you know what I mean like just that it's connecting, you know what I mean? People, a lot of them probably already connected, you know, in right. some way, but you can see if somebody's package got taken, you know, and maybe look out yeah, yeah. or something like that. I don't know. But you can also see when they get a package. So you know, if your neighbor I, is now on the up and up, they may be monitoring you know, your packages. And I was one, like they, a lot of times they take my groceries to someone else's house and then I call them and tell them they did not bring me their groceries. 
And then I walk the neighborhood and find my groceries. <laughs> so I get my money back. But the fact that I had to walk and find them is gets my free groceries too. You know what I'm saying? Like you shouldn't have done that. Because I've had to walk blocks with bags of food. Look, no. And technically they didn't give you your groceries. So yeah, you're right. That's right. Exactly. That's right. That's and right. the only reason I'm going back to get it, because then you can't fit all that in your refrigerator. It's really not a good thing, is because the um the person doesn't want it in front of the house. Because right. they're not gonna wow. eat it. It would be different if I live somewhere where the people actually would appreciate it, they're gonna throw it away. You know what I mean? Like, what is this? You know, I will. I know I wouldn't eat somebody else's stuff. The um, so I don't trust. You know what I mean? Anything that myself probably wouldn't have COVID. You won't even look in the bag. <laughs> That's <a> setup. <laughs> but the um, but yeah, it's it's great. But so they got they stopped. Doing, you know what I mean? They started working on, it, and then they started. Um, you know now like um, though. You know, they're that's not a, they're not as generous as you know what I mean they used to be. It'd be like <laughs> they'll be like, well, we can't bring it back till tomorrow or something. You know what I mean? It's not it's not as good. But their service, I have been impressed with their service. You know, because everybody makes mistakes, but it's not the, that right. you made a mistake. It's how you clean it up, and right. they are masters at cleaning it up. Mm hmm. Miss Sumter. Yes. Quick question. Oh, that's right. When you say that you know, uh, in, in, in Europe that they're ahead of us in cyber security, how far their behind privacy. are we? Their privacy. How far behind are we compared to that? <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, in my opinion, we're pretty far behind um, yeah. because, as I said, data is a right, right. Um, over there as a citizen. So as a citizen, you have control over you know, how your data is used, what data you share, um, and they have, and they are opt in, like they right. can't just by default, you mm. know, start using your data for however they want mm. to, and if uh, an organization collects your data, they have to tell you how they use it, mm -hmm. right. and where it's going to be used, where it's in the, you know, the state, it's the opposite. Yeah, and right. in my industry, we can't do that. You know, I cannot use anybody's information. And it's amazing how in the other industries, they let them do that. You know? Right. And it is amazing. It's sad, they, really. Yeah. They make so much money, you know, because I guess they're trying to say it's not personal information. It's just what type of food they like, but it's still your information. Right. That's why sometimes when I go bike riding, I leave my phone in the house because they track my whereabouts. I'm like, well, why you like like I, I go riding in a certain part of town and then I get back home and you, you I get a text on my phone. How did you like this certain trail you was left on? What the hell you talking about? <laughs> but at the same time, it's good for protection for you. Okay. So I always keep it because I'm telling you, I, you know, I watched a lot of Dateline in 2020 and all that. <laughs> first 48, first 48. Yeah, first 48, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, where's the phone? Where's his phone? Like, you know, like, because when you know, I have a, um, a, um, a, a Facebook friend and his daughter died and they cannot find her phone. You know what I'm saying? And you know how big a deal that is? Because he was like, she keeps her phone by her all the time. And she just died in the bed. And the phone is gone. And she was in an estranged relationship. So they just don't see, you know, unless there's a reason, they won't even investigate it as anything other than she just died. You know, but if that phone was there and they saw violent or threatening texts and stuff like that, you know, on it, but... There's nothing there, so the phone, you know, can be to your advantage. But have your security set up on it, though. Is then we have this high security phone. They couldn't get in it to save our life, could they? Mm -hmm. You know, see, they, well, I guess if they got my finger, I'd be good. <laughs> as long as they got me. But they, have to, they have to use it to find me. No, they'd be like, take your finger, tell us everything. <laughs> But I don't. Use, but actually, I don't use it to open. I use it for access to things inside. Cause you use the passcode to get in. But some people do use their finger, right, to get in, or their eye, or their face. I use my face on my computers. Which this passcode. day and age, with artificial intelligence, that's 
you know, sometimes you can defeat some of those control. I know like on some of my uh, facial recognition at like my game system, my children will come in and it'll recognize them as me. Wow, stop. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> so, you know, it, and it depends on the quality yeah. of the camera oh, and how many data points they have. But my kids have logged in on my gaming account. Wow. Not on purpose, but it'll just say hi, Sean. Yeah, it pops up. Yeah, that's what it does. That's crazy. <laughs> But that's another thing that's a concern come up in cybersecurity is when you take pictures, um, either video, and you have your hands up facing out, that they can capture your fingerprint. Stop. Because the video quality, the digital quality now is such that wow. you can recreate a fingerprint. Wow. Mm. Ain't that something? Wow. Ooh. Stop yeah. waving your hands, JB. Right? <laughs> put your hands down. Look, look, put your hands down. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Look, look. Right. 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 And don't you right. dare put the finger up. <laughs> don't you dare put the finger up that you use. <laughs> I know. Right? Like, just hold it inside. There you go. <laughs> Y'all are bad. I can't show you my inside. Y'all are, like, trying to freeze frame it. Mm, mm, mm. That is sad. But it's real. Um, Thank you for sharing. Scary, You're the best. Real. We are blessed yeah. to have you. You know, Thanks. we are blessed to have you. Thank uh, all you. this technology, I don't know how much we really gained from it. It looks like, you know, the old fashioned way of writing a check. You know, you didn't have all this going on. Yes. Um, but yes. But that check board, that was a mess. <laughs> you know, people used to like just print up checks and go in well, the bank. And, like, you know, oh, it was, Lord. Like, that's like, Remember that movie? It was talking about that guy who had all like millions of dollars of fraudulent checks. Yeah. Just okay. Open. Cash is the way to go. Cash. Cash is the way to go. <laughs> but then you know, you know, I, I, you know, that only take you. They're getting it. There's mm. always, you know, there's always going to be a give and a take. Always yes, going to be is. give and a take. But, um, but there are definitely um, a need for making sure that you have some cash in the house or somewhere, somewhere oh, safe. Man. Amen. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. well, because in, in reality, if, if they do something and the uh, financial system is hacked, mm -hmm. we'll be able to make it through at least a good week. You know, our system. Get you are a nice safe from Amazon. Mm, uh, I know, right? But I don't, <laughs> I don't know how we would transact. You know, businesses like Amazon would be impacted a lot. You know, I mean, but they were just impacted the other day when that cloud system they used was down. That backed up their for probably a day or so. It's amazing. So that, that's why it's so sensitive when um, the, the market reacts so much to these hackers. Mm. But yeah. we're, we're going to be pretty quick and we're getting better and better at it, you know, and, how, and more and more regulation and more and more global emphasis on trying to arrest the people that do these things. You know, we have to get some uh, sort of policing, no matter where the person's located, you can't do that. So we're gonna have to have like, what? You, you agree, Ms. Sumter, some sort of global security system that of punishment, that that's a, you know what I mean? That that's a international felony, you know, for you to do that. And you have to go to international jail. Uh <laughs> I, I don't know. That would be that would cut down on it. I don't see, you know, that. You know, other I don't foresee that anytime soon with like there being an international. I think it's going to be jurisdictional, just because territories are territorial, mm -hmm. and you know, it's going to depend on what's the biggest crime of you know that's going on at the moment. You because mm -hmm. you on a phishing email lost five hundred bucks. Or this, you know, human trafficking ring is kind of where they're going to invest the resources. Mm. I mean, organizations are trying. Like I said, the European Union, um, they are making a big push with data privacy and their uh, GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation that came out. Mm. So, you know, I'm seeing other states, like California is probably the most progressive when it comes to data privacy. Mm. Uh, with their law that they passed, I think it was 2019. Mm. Um, but as far as an international jail, mm, 
I, I don't know about that one. They, oh. they, I mean, that doesn't even work with regular, <laughs> regular world crime. So I don't know about cyber crime. Yeah, but it, it's, right. you know, That's but right. if we're really getting attacked from overseas, you know, we're gonna, they're gonna have to, like, you know, if not because that might be the next war, it might be, you know, in cybersecurity. So we're gonna have to figure out something. Like if somebody from China does it, you know what I mean? We should be able to expect China to do something, you know what I mean, to crack down on that person. Never but, happened. But you're right. You're, Never you're happened. right. Because we don't know the government. We, if they if they don't, then we should work under the assumption that the government is supporting it, right? You well, know. I mean, you know, it's all politics. It's yeah. a little give and take kind of thing. So I, you know, yeah. it's, it's not about necessarily what's right and what's best for the citizenry, but mm. you know, mm. and then that's sad. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. No, and that's the challenge because I think that's interesting. Because you are thinking more from how we need to personally protect ourselves. And I'm thinking, like, what business needs to do, you know, to see to protect, you know, the customer from the outside. But I guess right. your point is be careful with the data that we provide. You know what I mean? So, you know, and. Well, it's both. I mean, companies have a responsibility yeah. to protect your data when they co collect it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, you know, not so sure about the government enforcement, but we'll see because uh, President Biden did issue an executive order after the colonial pipeline hack mm -hmm. about government agencies having to step up and contractors having to step up their cybersecurity and all of these changes that they're implementing. So I think that I don't know why it took that one to be the wake up call, but I think people are taking it more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, with the cybersecurity threats than they have been in the past. And I, I they know took that know. one more seriously because it's about oil. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I know that you had um, you had mentioned months ago that there was a crackdown on not paying hackers. And then they paid that $4 million. And then they were saying, well, it's not really a crime to pay it. Like, we don't want them to. Now, well, it is a crime. That's it not is a crime. True. It is a crime. Yeah, but uh, I they also news, like they were saying, "Well, you can't." You know what I mean? That we're gonna create that now, but it already existed, correct? Right. They weren't supposed to pay that. So, well, this is the way a private organization they can't tell you not to pay or pay. They, okay. the law enforcement, FBI, whoever will encourage you not to pay or yeah. recommend you don't pay because it encourages the bad behavior of the cyber attackers. However, they did recently come out with um, a directive about people paying cyber criminals on the sanctioned countries list. It's mm. uh, OFAC, which is the Office of Foreign Assets and mm. Control. So, but mm. basically anyone on the sanction list, so like your uh, um, Iran, yeah, uh, Russia, these places where we have sanctions against okay. other countries, if you pay a ransom to them because you're funding terrorism or whatever crime mm. they, that's how they fund it, then that could get you in hot water. Now, I haven't mm. read the details to see if that's the case with this colonial pipeline hack. Um, but they they did have questions for the CEO, and they got half uh, of it. I think, uh, I think the government though got half of that back, you know. But they probably didn't get it. Look, the government was like, "We got it back, and um, we'll take care of this." <laughs> <laughs> we'll 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 discuss that later. Like, why did you give? We'll it hold it for you. Yeah, right. Exactly. Isn't that the truth? Well, thank you. Thank you. It is late, y'all. You all are the best. So we are really, we are the geek squad. And all of y'all are very, very good looking. It's amazing to me <laughs> how much y'all like technology. I know it because I know what y'all look like. We are <laughs> beautiful people. How the Anderson oh, you, doing? Oh, two two other little small things. I, I don't know if we touched on this. I think the, these are things that we keep in practice, like at both of my jobs. But Mm -hmm. uh, signing off from web pages mm -hmm. when you get it from your desk you go get coffee whatever mm -hmm. sign off or lock your computer mm -hmm. and just you know leaving websites up you know you're going down to the next that department to talk to somebody and you didn't take you know you didn't mm -hmm. do like a control lock delete mm -hmm. 
Mm. That's, they stress that a lot. And that's part of some of the questions that will come up in some of those classes that I was saying earlier that mm. we're required to take. That's, that's my little point. Thing. Especially all of y'all, you know, especially now, like with everybody working from home, like, and now you're going to go start going back around more people. Like you've always been working through the pandemic, Ms. Davis, you know, but yes. the, um, so many people have, they should do a whole cybersecurity training again when people get back into being around a lot of people because, I, you know, I, I saw this lady, she sued um, her employer, well, her coworker sued the employer because the, this is the actual coworker, stole money from other coworkers. And she sued the company to get her job back because she said they should have made everybody put their purses away. (laughs) (laughs) And she and she got her job back. back. Don't let they they let the klepto back in the office. Oh my god. And they they all had to be provided with places to put their purses. Because she had (laughs) sticky fingers. Yeah. Man. Y'all didn't hear this from me, but I take her in the bathroom and give her a beat right? down. I mean, she stole, she stole look, 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 look. I, I, I did. I ain't mad at her. I, I'm like, that that's like brilliant. crazy. That's brilliant. Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. That she shouldn't have been exposed to it anyway. That's crazy. I mean, like, crazy. I call the police on you for theft. Yeah. yeah. But I'm telling you, the you the, so anybody that works with the union the, and the union say they can't help you, it's not true. Because I, I saw that union help that lady, and I saw that same union not help a disabled lady who legitimately had a concern. Wow. You know? Man, would, would you go back into the office with all the people that you stole from? <laughs> not sick, like, they should have put her name up that she was caught stealing or whatever. Let everybody know she a thief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, I'm sure they if, would, the, the if staff would have took care of that. To do that, you definitely have enough nerve to go back in. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yes, yeah, I she, got something for you too when you come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, right? You know, all your coworkers. Exactly. Y'all don't even know she talking big. That that woman uh-huh. right there got the biggest smile. That, that would be the first person she would go to. Hey, girl. And you would be like, be like, God wants me to forgive her. God wants us to forgive. I got my money back. It's all right. But, <laughs> all right. but JB, you know, um, one thing you could do is if she came back, fix a nice cake for her. That's right. Oh, and so say, that. welcome back. <laughs> oh, oh, I'd like to help that chocolate pie. Yeah, exactly. Not one yeah. of them. Oh, oh, stop. Oh, stop. It's not the chocolate pie. Oh, oh. Lord. The chocolate oh, Lord. pie. Y'all are bad. Yes, and they are. Good off, <laughs> Exactly. She'd be too smart, though. She'd know not to eat that. You know? She, uh, ex- exactly. She, she should be. be. <laughs> <laughs> give us a good Look, she actually, look, she actually should have done, yeah, done some other things with her life. Like, you get away with that, you could have been doing something else. That's yeah. Give us some green Kool Aid. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a nice, a nice refreshing lemonade. Y'all are bad. Y'all are too bad. I love y'all. I love y'all. I'm gonna I'm finish off tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna have us some um, Bobby Womack. I can't believe I was playing Harry Hippie and y'all ain't know about it. I don't know what to say.